All right, let's call this meeting to order. Please rise for the pledge. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We have uh, minutes from the April 1st meeting. Should have all received those. Move for approval as presented to us. Mr. Second. Mr. Saunders makes a motion to approve the minutes. And uh, Mrs. Leisure, a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll have a roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Beeson? Aye. Mr. Chamness? Aye. Mr. Gillum? Aye. Mrs. Leisure? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Plaster? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. We have no appointments. Let's go to new business. Uh, the first thing on the agenda is an additional appropriation of $500,000 for a public health fund. You'll remember we uh, went through this process last month and uh, we didn't have all the I's dotted and T's crossed. The, the uh, advertising was not in the appropriate time frame, so we need to do this again. Um, do we need proof of publication? I do have we it. Have it? the date was correct. It was advertised April 22nd. Okay. So we need to... Uh, we don't need a... Do we need a public hearing? We don't because this is, mm -hmm. this is already in the health fund, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the money is already in the health fund. As you recall, we, we uh, moved it there last year, uh, but it was after the budget process and, and the DLGF had already set the budget. So this money is in the public health fund, but it needs to be appropriated. Move to approve. We have a, a motion of approval from Mr. Smith. We have a second from Mr. Saunders. We have a third from Mr. Beeson. So we're in good shape. Any further discussion before we take a vote? <clears throat> Hearing none, we'll do a roll, roll call vote. Mr. Beeson? Aye. Mr. Chamness? Aye. Mr. Gillum? Aye. Mrs. Leisure? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Plaster, aye. Motion carries unanimously. So that is taken care of. Um, there's a proposal for an Elder Beerman maintenance agreement. And do we have that? No, you don't. I, I, I think at this point, let me just bring you up today as to where we are. And, okay. And I think President Plaster and I have talked about it, but I think all council needs to needs to be up to speed. Can you folks on the phone hear me okay? Can't hear, can't hear you. Uh, yeah, we've had you want to take that microphone there, Ron? Okay. Now, how's this? Can you hear him now? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, as has been the plan all uh, since we have, since the Elder, Be Elder Beerman building was acquired, uh, we want to get it into the ownership of a public entity to cut off the accrual of real estate taxes that really are phantom at this point because the commissioners are going to waive those taxes. It's been determined that the more appropriate entity to become the owner of that building as between the city and the county would probably be the city based upon its location and the fact that an ultimate developer would probably approach the city for additional financial incentives, if you will. So. Uh, the EDC and Val Schaefer felt that it was better to have one single contact than to have a couple. So the plan is then to go forward with the transfer of title from the EDC to the city uh, thereafter, but that will, that's in the process of being uh, 
negotiated, if you will. Uh, there will be a lease back then from the city to the EDC in very similar fashion to the lease back uh, option of purchase provisions that are contained in the uh, industrial park properties that we uh, title in the name of the uh, uh, EDC or you're keeping the, we keep in the name of the city or the county, but then the, the EDC has a lease option to allow the development of those properties and the sale to third parties without having to comply with all the uh, appraisal statutes that would otherwise be applicable. So that's the plan as far as the building itself goes. One thing that we've done since the acquisition of the building is that the county has, through the uh, consolidated edit, uh, funded the annual cost of maintenance. So uh, I had prepared a draft agreement. I think I'd send it out to you. Uh, I did get some comment back from uh, the attorneys for the EDC, uh, George Sowers, and he would prefer that the lease, that the maintenance agreement term be identical to and coincide with that uh, lease option purchase that the city and the, and the EDC will enter into. That would extend it through December 31, 2021, and with yearly options through 2024. Uh, I typically will not, have, the commissioners nor uh, council has have agreed to extend any type of contractual commitments in the past beyond the term of the current EDC county contract. Uh, this, I think, is a, maybe an exception. I've talked to Preston Plaster. I think he can support it, but I, I, I didn't want to take it upon myself to agree to that. So that's, the, that's the, basically the guts of the proposal. Now, in consideration for that extended term, uh, I approached the idea of putting an annual cap on the amount of the county's maintenance contribution. And uh, that idea has at least been receptive to the EDC. I'm waiting to hear back from the city. So you can see there's still some balloons in the air. We're currently operating at approximately $45,000, $46,000 a year maintenance expenses, which is good. Uh, we estimated originally that we'd be anywhere from five to $6,000 a month, so probably another $20,000 on top of that. Uh, I would suggest, and I, there's nothing magical about it, uh, but uh, Val and I talked, and maybe a $52,000 or $55,000 annual cap Give, hmm. still give us some protection. I think everybody's concerned, and rightly so, about what will be the impact on our certified distribution of income taxes from the state as a, by, because of the pandemic and the loss of employment that's attendant there too. So, so that's where we are. Uh, invite any comments that anybody has either here or on the phone uh, to extend, to enter into a maintenance agreement <coughs> that I will bring back to you uh, either for workshop or at next meeting. There's really no dire time urgency involved other than the fact that once the title is transferred, then we'll start the process to uh, basically forgive the crude uh, taxes that have become liens on the property. Questions for Mr. Cross? Comments? Ron and I have talked. Go ahead, Chris. <clears throat> I will be abstaining on this vote because of course, originally I voted even against the county getting into the concept of uh, entering into the Elder Bergman building. So, uh, just to explain myself why I will be, there's no use to vote no, but I will vote abstain. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Um, Ron and I have talked uh, on this back and forth a couple of times, and, and I don't see any need to go significantly higher than the actual uh, uh, expenses uh, that we've, we've seen over the last year. So uh, 50 or $52,000 a year seems reasonable to me. Um, I don't have any real problem with, with uh, extending the length of the uh, agreement, I think, uh, for one thing. Uh, the mayor has already agreed uh, to uh, renew his his commitment to the EDC as part of the the old Reed uh, cleanup uh, process, and so uh, there will be money in the uh, in the consolidated edit fund. I think this is a, an important project that we need to see through to completion, so uh, I, I would support this um, as we refine the, the exact wording of the agreement. And, and we want to try to get that completed by when? 
Is there a? Right now, there's some negotiations going on between the city and the EDC on the terms of their lease option. But I would expect that we would want to resolve this. I would think by our June meeting. And, and I, and I, I realize workshops. If there's no agenda, that we're trying to be uh, new leads. That's the element social distancing. We don't have a meeting. We stay at home. <laughs> right. But I would expect to have this resolved by your June meeting. The June meeting. Okay. Um, other questions, comments? <clears throat> Thank you, Ron. Uh, next up is Superior 3 has a request to create a line item uh, 33170 for criminal appeals. And then they would like to transfer $15,000 from their pauper attorney line into that criminal appeals line item if you so approve. Uh, Mr. President? Yes, Mr. Beeson? Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we create line 33170 criminal appeals in Superior 3. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, the vote will be to create line item 33170, criminal appeals in the Superior 3 court budget. Mr. Beeson. Aye. Mr. Chamness. Aye. Mr. Gillum. Aye. Mrs. Leisure. Aye. Mr. Saunders. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Plaster votes aye. It's unanimous. Next is the transfer of $15,000 from pauper attorney to criminal appeals. So moved. Um, I'm going to give this one to uh, Mr. Saunders and the second to Mr. Smith. Yes? Yeah. All right. So we have a motion and a second for the transfer. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Beeson? Aye. Mr. Chamness? Aye. Mr. Gillum? Aye. Mrs. Leisure? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Plaster? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Um, a budget letter to department heads. Typically, Council sends a letter to department heads uh, with the budget information for the, the coming budget season. Um, so at this meeting, I wanted to just have a, open the floor for discussion um, and see what your pleasure is. My thoughts on it are that uh, given our circumstances with uncertainty on the impact of revenue, and let me just talk a little bit about uh, the possible impact on revenue. Um, as you're aware, the governor uh, extended the uh, deadline for payment of property taxes without penalty uh, for, by two months. So it'll be the middle of June before we know for certain um, what our what our property tax revenue is likely to be for the spring. Um, I've had discussions with other counties. Some of them are projecting anywhere from 5 to 10 percent decline. Some of those after using consultants. Um, we'll see. I, I believe that to be high just in my gut. But um, remember that the problem we're, we're likely to face is, is more a timing issue um, than an actual significant loss of revenue, even if there are a few people um, who tragically, because of this coronavirus or some other reason, are not able to pay their, their property taxes. There are provisions to eventually sell those properties for those those uh, lost taxes and we recoup those taxes at some point down the road, whether that's a year or two years, um, those taxes will be recouped. Um, on the uh, income tax front, 
depending on who you talk to, again, there's projected to be potentially a 10 to even uh, a little bit higher percent uh, decline because of unemployment rate. But as I've listened to the, uh, uh, the teleconferences that have been available uh, through the Association of Indiana Counties and, and others, um, the expectation is that, that will, it will not impact 2020 revenue. Those dollars are already in. It will impact 2021 dollars to a lesser extent and potentially 2022 to a greater extent because of the way the state collects taxes and then disperses it back to the counties. So again, depending on uh, how quickly we're able to rebound from, uh, from this uh, increase in, in unemployment uh, down the road, we'll have a decline of revenue and we'll have to see where we're at with that. Having said that, Oh, and let me just uh, also remind folks that uh, as the jail bond is paid off, the county income tax rate will be coming down by 0.25% uh, later this, this summer or fall. Um, so we'll go from a 1.5% income tax rate to a 1.25% income tax rate. Um, having said all of that with changes to uh, to the potential revenue streams uh, and we should probably add the decline in uh, in gas tax money people are traveling less so the revenue for that goes to the highway uh, local road and street fund uh, MVH will will decline as well um, those will be offset somewhat uh, as we pay off the jail bond by a transfer of whatever uh, additional monies are available in that fund, those are transferred ultimately to highway. Uh, having said all that, I think uh, it's probably prudent for us to request departments to not ask for an increase at this point. And my sense is we ought to ask for a contingency budget from them of how they would reduce uh, their budgets by 5% if that becomes necessary. Again, I don't think it will be. I think the decline um, in, in revenue um, will not impact us as greatly as some people fear. I would also point out that we have taken great pains uh, since 2008 uh, or thereabouts uh, to reduce our expenditures to the point where we were able to build up reserves. We have four million dollars in the rainy day fund at this point and it appears that it is raining uh, so it may be uh, necessary to tap into those funds to maintain programs uh, we certainly don't want to have to cut uh, those programs that are necessary to the operation good operation of, of county government so uh, with with those uh, thoughts of mine i'd like to ask you for your thoughts um, what would you like to share with, uh, with the department heads and elected officials as they begin to prepare their budget requests for 2021? Mr. Saunders? I feel like that we, the letter needs to go out, like you said, no increases. If they see something they feel like will come up, they put a notation in their budget that could possibly need more funds for something. And, and if that's the case, I think they should suggest couldn't hear, how... Couldn't hear Mr. Saunders. Uh, Mr. Saunders said he, he thinks they should not uh, request increases, but if they feel like they need increases, they should give us their justification in writing. Um, and I think if they do that, uh, that they should also present some options for cutting in other areas. I don't want to discourage people from from <clears throat> potentially moving money around within their budget, uh, but that the total of their budget would not increase. So if they want to move, okay. move money from travel to overtime or those kind of mm -hmm. things, um, you right. know, I think we can allow that. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Other Thank comments? I've already started uh, some conversation with the people uh, as a 
precautionary measure as they do look at uh, different positions and if it's an increase then how can they justify that not increasing their total overall operating budget so uh, I, I also indicated that this is not a one-year issue no it's it a multiple year so uh, think about the the ramifications of what you do how you do it and how you can sustain your current budget and not increase Beth, anything from you? No, I'm, I mean, I'm with Roger. When it's going to impact us over the next two years, then I think if we can at least stay the same right now, and we're going to be looking at cuts in the future. So. And this, this uh, situation appears to me to be significantly different from 2008, 2010, the so-called Great Recession. Um, but it, it may take some time. Um, almost certainly will take some time mm -hmm. to uh, to get us back to where we were with uh, employment levels and obviously employment levels uh, have an impact on our income tax receipts um, Tony or or Bob any comments on this topic I, I'm My only thing I'm fine with with uh, no increases. I, I do think it's important if, if they do have a concern to let us know a bunch of time. But absolutely, I, I, I think it's uh, necessary that we do it. Okay, Bob. Just that I, I think it's important that we move ahead with some caution, not to completely shut down everything, but to maximize those efforts that are needed to fill pertinent positions. Uh, and by the time we are making budget decisions, we'll have much better data on uh, on both our property tax collection for the spring term and uh, estimates of our income tax uh, for next year, 2021. So uh, we'll have that additional information at the time. Um, and when we get to the personnel committee, we'll be talking in a little more detail about staffing where we're at with that and, and how we might uh, go forward. But I think it prudent to suggest that uh, it, we're going to take very hard looks at any requests for additional staffing at this point. Uh, so my proposal would be that I will draft a letter and then I'll send it out to you, you all for, uh, for your feedback uh, before we send it out to department heads, if that's all right with you. Okay. Commissioner's comments. Mr. Paust. How are you, sir? I'm just fine. How are you folks today? So far, so good. Very good. Very good. Well, even with COVID-19, uh, things are still moving along, in some cases uh, slowly. Uh, the jail bond projects that we have in the jail have slowed down. Uh, due to the fact of one not only getting material in from manufacturers, but also some of the subcontractors are not working. Uh, therefore, some of the projects in the jail have slowed down, but uh, we are moving along very, very slowly, and we'll continue doing that as uh, we progress. Uh, the courthouse have act system, believe it or not. Uh, we've done the punch list, have a couple minor things we need to do, but that's moved along fine. Uh, so that project will be completed uh, yet this month. Uh, the jail courthouse security, uh, we had the pre-bid conference here uh, this week, or last week, excuse me, and all the folks were in here, and we had five interested parties that were here. That's two more than we had anticipated. We thought we were going to have at least three folks here uh, with us on that project, so we're happy about that. Looking forward to getting uh, good competitive uh, bids on that project. The Guardian I lied them off us, so we're still waiting for the folks that own the vending machines to come back to work. Uh, they have to move that equipment themselves, and so we're hoping they'll soon be here uh, back to work based on what the governor is allowing different folks to do. As you know, last week uh, we had a staff meeting. Uh, several of you were on the telephone. Uh, when we had that meeting, we met with all of our uh, department heads and folks uh, bring them up to date as to where we were, uh, what we were looking at doing in, in the future. 
uh, in the building, also about bringing folks back into uh, our facility. Uh, tentatively, we're kind of looking around uh, the 15th of June of when we would bring folks uh, back into here. Have a lot of changes to make in the uh, uh, time being. We're working on spatial uh, sneeze guards for all of our individual departments that have contact uh, uh, with the public. Uh, also, one of the key things we're working on right now, and I look to our viewing audience, uh, we need poll workers uh, for the election that's coming up uh, in June. Uh, most of the poll workers that we've had in the past have been folks that are in their 60 or 70, in some case 80 years of age. So we have several of those that will not be working the polls uh, this year. So for the first time, we're looking at the possibilities during the primary uh, that we may not have some of the polling places. For example, Hagerstown right now, we have no poll workers for the Hagerstown area. So if there's anyone out there that would like to volunteer, uh, it takes about 12 hours on that day to work. Uh, you can earn the pay is anywhere from $85 to $125, $150, depending on which uh, position you have. So we are looking for folks. If you're interested, you can call the uh, Wayne County Clerk's Office. The other thing we're advising folks to do if you're concerned about going to the polls on voting day is to call in and get an absentee ballot. And so um, we'd like for you to do that, and that phone number is 9 seven three one two two six and you have until uh, may 21st to request an absentee ballot so you can do that you get an absentee ballot and you can send it in so anybody out there we encourage you to do that it's a simple telephone they'll mail everything to you and all you have to do is mail it back in so think about that make that phone call nine seven three nine two two six the other thing I'd like to encourage everybody that's in the viewing audience today, uh, as Mr. Plaster pointed out early on, uh, we'd like for you to pay your taxes. Taxes are due. Um, normally we do by May the 10th, and so you do have an extension this year. Uh, we ask for you to pay those as soon as you can. Uh, we do need to get those dollars in so we can keep government up and running. Uh, the treasurer's office has done an excellent job in working with First Bank Richmond and with uh, Wayne Bank that you can utilize any of their facility to pay your taxes. It's not necessary for you to come in to the courthouse. Our facility is closed here at this time. Only way you can get in is if you have an appointment that you've made with the treasurer's office. Also, the treasurer has put together a large uh, mailbox a brown mailbox that's located in the south parking lot here in the annex uh, that you can drop your uh, tax uh, payments in there all you got to do is put it in an envelope put it in the box they empty that uh, post office box three times during the day uh, they'll process your uh, payment and your canceled check will be your receipt for your tax payment so we encourage folks uh, to do that other than that everything's moved along well teleconferencing has been working well uh, working at home with several of the different offices has been a very interesting experiment uh, one office in particular told me here last week said you know we've done so well on this we we wouldn't even have to come back into the office and so they've done a good job working at home others a little more difficult in some cases for some others Many of the offices are evaluating when we do open up exactly how they're going to function. You will see some changes that are coming uh, in some of the office where they're going to change what they're doing, how they've allowed folks to come into their office, and they'll be changing that and only allowing folks to come up uh, to the counter. And as I mentioned, we'll have sneeze guards that we're working on. Steve has several samples in now. Uh, we'll be testing those to see how they work. Uh, to protect all the individual folks we have. Uh, we'll also have the ability when we come back uh, for folks uh, to be able to take the temperature of all their individuals. We'll also have a sheet together with questions and answers to some of the basic questions that folks have been asking us. So uh, we'll be putting that down in writing so that they have that uh, to help HR so they don't get so many questions. Other than that, um, we're doing business as usual with only a few minor changes along the way. So we'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. 
Questions for Mr. Paust? No questions, but Kenny, did you mention you can pay your property taxes online? Right on I our website? Not, you it is can so do that. easy. Yeah. It's a dollar fifty extra charge, but right, it's worth sitting card. at your house and just paying your taxes right, right there. No, that's I did I did leave that one out. You just right. go to the county's website and there's a button to press to pay them and it takes you right to that site. Right. It is. It's very, very simple. Mm -hmm. Yes. So as as we think about reopening for business, <clears throat> what is your what is your thinking at the moment about providing personal protective equipment to either staff staff and or visitors from the outside? What we have, we have purchased uh, PPE equipment. Uh, we will have for all of our staff here, we will have masks. Uh, when they come back to work, we will have masks for every one of our folks that are here. Uh, tentatively, what we were looking at is that uh, an individual at that time, once we open up the buildings, uh, that an individual would have to provide their own mask. One of the problems with that is that you just can't go to a retail store or someplace and buy the masks on there. So the question has come up as to whether or not the county would have to uh, provide masks for folks, and if we did, what that number would be. And, so uh, we've made a couple of purchases. Uh, the last purchase we made uh, in that one, we, we purchased 3,000 uh, of the masks similar to this. The surgical masks. Surgical masks. Uh, so we do have 3,000 of those. I have another 1,000 to 2,000 that are on hold for us, also that are due in uh, around May the uh, 15th. So that would give us on hand just in that one purchase alone about 5,000 masks uh, that we would have available uh, for distribution at this point. There are more and more of the masks that are coming online all the time through my former business of promotional products. I'm receiving at home from companies almost daily now that are gearing up and are producing the masks in all different formats. So I think in the near future, masks are gonna be quite readily available. Uh, through the Tourism Bureau uh, and Mary Walker. Uh, Mary Walker had ordered a supply of 3,000 masks also, which are due in around May the 15th. Those are available to other folks uh, in the county that are interested. I do know that some of the universities have called asking for some of those masks also, but we will have adequate masks in place. Uh, we will continue with our um, uh, cleaning that we're doing uh, each evening of cleaning all of our hard surfaces and everything. We also, when we open back up initially, we will be doing a spraying, which we've done several times already throughout both the courthouse and uh, the annex, and we'll do that once a week. Uh, we'll completely go through, so when folks come back in on Monday, we will completely have sterilized everything throughout uh, the facility. All the different departments will have the adequate uh, spray as well as the wipes uh, that they need. And they'll have, uh, like I said, the sneeze guards. So as they're dealing with the public, uh, they'll be uh, protected from anybody sneezing or coughing on them. So I think we'll be in good shape when uh, we finally bring the folks back in. Other questions for Mr. Paust? Ken, are you gonna mention the fact that we're anticipating a joint executive order issue. Uh, we do uh, this afternoon. Uh, um, we do have the uh, tentative executive order that we will be looking at uh, to update ours. Um, we've had discussion on that, and so the commissioners will be looking at that this afternoon. There will be, I'm sure, some minor changes, uh, but basically I think we'll probably be looking at what the governor has suggested on there. Uh, with some changes, and it, it varies by county. Uh, as you know, uh, we have been very strong in encouraging folks when you're out in the public uh, to wear the mask. Uh, I certainly agree with that. Our health department uh, certainly recommends doing that to the individuals. As you know, the public health department held a free giveaway this weekend at the health department. They gave close to 14 to 1500 masks to folks that drove through in a drive-through there. Uh, they still have uh, several hundred 
masks that are available. So anyone that's interested in getting masks, uh, the max that we will give you on those that have been donated will be four. All you have to do is go by the health department, call, they'll bring them out to your car to you, and so they're available to you on there. So don't say you can't get them, they're free, you can pick them up there. So once uh, we have our discussion this afternoon, uh, depending on what we do at that time, uh, our recommendations will go back to the city side if we're all in agreement and uh, the attorneys have everything put together, then we'll issue a new executive order at that time. All right. Thank you, Mr. Paust. Kenny, <clears throat> you might mention that, of course, the deadline for asking for a absentee ballot is the 21st. This mail's running a little, <clears throat> a little slower now. Took 20 days for my light bill to get to Duke Energy, so. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> <laughs> so. It must have took a nap better someplace. Better not wait for that deadline too close. <laughs> better not wait for the deadline too close if you're thinking right. about getting an absentee, absentee ballot, ballot. Go ahead and get, get it sent in so they can process it and get it back to you. Right. You were talking earlier about uh, lack of, uh, of poll workers, and I would suggest that we consider talking to our own employees, um, asking mm -hmm. for volunteers to, to work the poll. Um, we, we need to have people staffing the polls to, to carry out this election. So, um, Jeff and I did talk about that. I will be sending a memo out to all of our department heads asking them if they have anybody within their departments that would be willing to volunteer on that day, but they would be paid just the same as if they're working. And uh, in our discussion, Jeff and I said the additional hours that they would work, they would get overtime for that, but they would get their pay and uh, we'd be happy to have them if they'd be willing to volunteer to work and do that. And I think it's a good place. It gives us 300 people to ask to see if we could get some of the help that we need. Well, and if, if we're going down that road, I was hopeful that, that you would support that, but we need to make sure if, if we're going to do that, that enough money is available in overtime to, mm -hmm. to, uh, uh, to take care of that. It may not be available in all departments. so. The thought being, um, on election day, the the workload, hopefully, uh, since we still won't be open to the public, might be such that we could uh, have people work, particularly the people that uh, are working from home, uh, that they might be able to go work at the polls, uh, still collect their, their regular salary. but volunteer not force anybody to do right. that if they're uncomfortable well, doing that. I think that. too the governor uh, opened that up to allow 18 year olds to work the polls um, so another avenue could be contacting our local school districts uh, to possibly encourage our seniors out there that uh, possibly could uh, take advantage of this opportunity as well. That's right. Good idea. Mm -hmm. I hadn't heard that. Mm -hmm. High school seniors, yeah. not, not High senior school. citizens. <laughs> High school seniors. Chris, did you have a comment? Yeah. I, I, now, is 65 the minimum that a poll worker can be? I mean, excuse me, the maximum. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The age, you mean? There isn't yeah. any age. No. no age. Chris, no. there's no cutoff for there poll workers. No, no age discrimination. Yeah. It's just that I, I, I know some healthy late 60s and early 70s. And I, uh, I, I think the issue at this point, Chris, is not that they're restricted from doing it, but that they're I, they don't want to do it because of the, the virus mm -hmm. and okay, they're it, maybe they're more at risk. But it would be up to them. Choices. Yes, yeah, correct. Okay. okay, thank gotcha. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay, I think that's it for Ken. Um, Citizen comments. I'm. Uh, I want to share a little bit of information. Uh, there have been conversations uh, that uh, were started by the Economic Development Corporation, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the the Wayne County Foundation, and several others uh, about looking at the possibility of a small business uh, support program 
Um, you've seen all of the, the federal programs, there's state programs as well, and in fact, Wayne County applied for funding through OCRA uh, for a, a $250,000 grant that could have been used uh, in, in smaller grants to small businesses uh, to help them retain uh, low to moderate income workers. Um, we were not successful, but the city of Richmond was. In fact, in our uh, six county area, five of the counties uh, received $250,000 for a program. Um, either the, the city, the largest city within that county or the county itself. So the city of Richmond received money. They are using their dollars uh, in the center city development corporations area of operation, which is the river to uh, 16th Street and North E to South E. Um, so they have geographic limitations essentially to the downtown area of Richmond for, the, for their program. Um, but we are we're having discussions. In fact, uh, uh, Commissioner Burns has called a uh, a teleconference of the Wayne County Revolving Loan Fund Committee um, for tomorrow to talk about whether that's something that uh, that we think should happen. The Revolving Loan Fund has somewhere in the neighborhood of four hundred and twenty-five thousand uh, dollars available to lend. Um, so those discussions are ongoing. Again, also with the EDC as to whether their board might uh, want to recommend consolidated edit dollars be uh, approved for some uh, a program and again what that program would look like is still very sketchy um, so from from Wayne County's perspective we have about three million dollars in the uh, in the Wayne County edit fund uh, and so we could choose to put some of that money into a program if we can if we can develop one that we can all agree on so um, we're also planning to ask for private dollars to be contributed, again, if and, and when we might uh, have a program that's approved. The city would be invited to participate as well, and have, they've been involved in the discussion. So, again, nothing is, is uh, a firm commitment at this point. We're looking at uh, whether that makes sense, whether there are... Uh, businesses that maybe have, have not been eligible for one reason or another for the federal dollars through the PPP program um, and other programs. Uh, we have uh, three bankers on the Wayne County Revolving Loan Fund. Uh, our own Tony Gillum, uh, Councilman Gillum, is actually on the city's revolving loan fund committee so he's got a lot of experience I think probably 25 years at least uh, working with that group so uh, if you have input we want to hear that commissioners I would encourage you all to uh, to have some conversations in your meeting and see uh, see where we want to go with this uh, and if we want to move forward what the timing might look like and what the program itself might look like so I um, wanted to bring that up today so you, you have it on your radar screen. You can be thinking about it and, and uh, formulate your thoughts as we move forward with this. Any questions on that at this point? And actually, as we, uh, Ron was involved in, in helping us do a little research on the Wayne County Revolving Loan Fund to try to sort out uh, what kind of limitations there might be on, on those funds. And uh, to the best of our investigation, those dollars came from county dollars at some point. Uh, it's been around a while, and I, we, I, I guess the answer is we weren't able to get a definitive answer. But, right. <laughs> but uh, we did not identify any type of federal or EDA grant source. We do have uh, loan protocols that are in place, but those I think are basically at the uh, at, at, at the discretion of the board itself to modify or waive. And this might be a program that they can carve out. Uh, that, that just be up to the board. Those are the discussions. From from what you've seen, Ron. We could, we could 
I could not under hear Ron. Uh, Ron basically said that that our investigation has not turned up any definitive uh, information that dollars in our revolving loan fund came from an outside source. Uh, Max Smith, who was a commissioner at the time the program was approved, um, believes that it was all funded by the county. Chris, you probably are the only council person who was around at that time. Do you have any I was, information? I was on the revolving, I was on the revolving loan fund. So I, was, I served on that for several years. If if that's my first go around. If that was probably uh, twenty five years ago. Right. That's that's just about exactly when it was. Um, okay. So if you have any information uh, that you can shed light on where the initial funding came from, uh, give that some thought and, and let me know. Okay, uh, I'll have to think on that. Okay, <laughs> maybe while you're, while you're eating some of those rolls that your wife made this morning, mm -hmm. you, can, yeah. uh, you can think about that. So Ron, um, if, the, if the revolving loan fund group sets those standards, do they need to be um, approved by the commissioners or is it do you No, I think they're an autonomous body. Okay. But it is, it I does mean, operate under county government and... It's, it, yeah, it operates under county government. It's subject to audit by the State Board of Accounts. Uh, it's a public agency, if you will. Uh, and, of course, the appointing authorities. Right. Are defined in and, and the council has one... Um, appointment to be filled yet and so if we go down this road and and we anticipate a lot of activity because that board very seldom meets uh, but if we put out a uh, an application process for something like this uh, we'll need to be fully staffed so we'll want to uh, think we through who we want to appoint borrowers who have outstanding loans that are obviously significantly and adversely impacted by the uh, by the government, by the shut, economic shutdown. So right. Mm -hmm. So we'll want to think through what we do with them as well. Okay. All right. Anything else from council? Mm -hmm. Mr. President. Yes, sir. I will be distributing uh, the annual audit letter as the State Board of Accounts Field Examiner completes the 2019 audit. I have to give a statement of pending litigation matters. No Can't changes. make any of that out. No okay. changes last year. But take a look at it if you have questions. Uh, Ron said there's no change to uh, the statement of litigation matters from last year's audit. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. We need, to we need to get him a mic. Well, he had one and, and somebody Should took it. We have limited microphones for this teleconference set up. Um, okay. <laughs> Check with the sheriff and see if we can run, run uh, get a couple of them run down. <laughs> okay, anything else? If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Um, you are a day late and a dollar short, dear Chris. Sorry, uh, Mrs. Leisure made the motion. And Mr. Saunders made the second, but it was good to hear from you on that. So let's, just for fun, so you have something else to vote on, let's, let's take a roll call vote on adjournment. Mr. Beeson? Aye. Mr. Chamness? Aye. Mr. Gillum? Aye. Mrs. Leisure? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Mr. Plaster? Aye. We are adjourned.